Greetings. Today, we gather for the eighth Sunday after Pentecost to worship a God that makes growth, a God that allows us to look at this world and in ordinary things see the amazing ways in which the kingdom is breaking through. Today, we worship a God who meets us each and every day with the good news of Jesus Christ. I would invite you today to remain after the service as there will be a brief uh, time of sharing some of the decisions made by our church council and deacons that have direct implications for worship on August 2nd. Today, though, I would invite you to be prepared to actively participate in worship by clicking on the links in the description to this video where you can then find the bulletin to have that at your ready to participate at home. Also, know that as part of our service, we will be celebrating communion, and we would invite you to have the elements at home that you will choose to use for that part at your ready for that time in the midst of the service. Let us now prepare ourselves to worship a God who meets us with grace, love, and hope now and always. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all wherever you are. Let us now pray. Beloved and sovereign God, through the death and resurrection of your Son, you bring us into your kingdom of justice and mercy. By your Spirit, give us your wisdom, that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from the first book of Kings, the third chapter, beginning with the fifth verse. At Gibeon, the Lord asked Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart towards you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or to come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people with whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous that they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil, for who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has seen it before, and no one like you shall rise after you. The Holy Gospel for today, according to Matthew. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds. But when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid, then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. 
the angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. Here ends the Holy Gospel. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You may be familiar with the Rorschach test. It's actually called the Rorschach Inkblot Psychological Test. It's named after Herman Rorschach, who developed it in 1921. It's a test that asks the individual to look at and to give their interpretation of 10 different ink blots, asking them the question, what do you see? What do you see? It's a question that applies to more than just this inkblot test. No, it's a question that we are asked all the time. And, and as I read today's gospel lesson, I thought to myself, how is it that the followers of Jesus would have answered the question, what do you see? These were people that knew very difficult, challenging, and and horrible times, really. They lived under occupation. They lived under oppression. What might their answers be to this Rorschach test? Because the truth about the Rorschach test is that the ink blots can be many different things. But instead, an individual projects their interpretation of the world, what it is they see in the world, onto those ink blots. And sometimes they project things that speak of pain and anger and hunger and frustration and malcontent because that's just the way they see the world. The followers of Jesus in our gospel could have known a world very well described by those words. But is that much different than the words that might be used to describe us as we look around our world? You turn on the TV You open a newspaper, you go to your news on the internet, and what do you see? You hear stories of COVID, of racism, of abuse, of hostility, of all types of different and difficult and challenging things. And if you were asked the question, what do you see? The temptation might come to lean in and say, you know what? I don't see anything good. Certainly a valid interpretation. It's one that the followers of Jesus felt. And hence, they turn to Jesus in our gospel lesson today, and they ask, what is it that you see? Because from our point of view, there's so many challenges, so many difficulties. Our answer to that question is very depressing. Our answer to that question lacks hope. Jesus, rabbi, teacher, Help us to answer that question. They come to Jesus just like Solomon came to God. Solomon was a king that understood the challenges and difficulties and struggles of leading. And when God comes to Solomon and asks, what can I give you? Solomon asks for one thing, wisdom. Wisdom. So that he might discern what is right Separate what is good from what is evil. Wisdom to lead. Wisdom to see something other than despair and pain and struggle and challenge. It's the same thing that the followers of Jesus in our gospel ask. Jesus, give us wisdom so we might see the world in a different way. So that when someone comes to us, we might be able to answer the question, what do you see, with a message of hope, a better answer. And Jesus, in our gospel today, gives a response to that desire. Jesus meets them with some wisdom. Some wisdom that actually, I think, is well captured in a jazz song written by Bob Thiel and George David Weiss back in 1967. The most famous rendition 
was made by Louis Armstrong. And the lyrics of this song begin, I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and for you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Did you sing along at the end? Maybe. This song, it, it highlights ordinary things like skies and clouds, like rainbows. It even talks of friends shaking hands, something you might want to avoid for a little bit. But it points out simple things that are often overlooked when we're asked the question, what do you see? But Jesus, in his answer, in giving wisdom to his followers, points out these simple things. A mustard seed, a pinch of yeast, things that show growth. He points out a field and a merchant's shop that unknowingly house great treasures. He points out a net full of fish, fish that are good and bad but yet fish enough to provide for the people of that day because it's in those ordinary things that Jesus sees a potential for a wonderful world. It's in those ordinary things where he sees the kingdom of God breaking through into our world. Jesus says, look here, look here. Because that's where the kingdom of God is breaking through. Jesus says, look here, look here. Because by looking at this ordinary simple thing that we often cast aside as nothing important, by looking at that, you catch a glimpse of a wonderful world. Yes, the kingdom of God is breaking through. In our Lessons today, it's shared how the kingdom of God is breaking through where there is growth. And as we look around, we can find growth. I think of the conversations that are currently taking place between people who look different from one another, who maybe have different ideas from one another, who live in different places from one another. And yet, what are we seeing? We are seeing growing conversations between people who had in the past just avoided one another. And in the midst of those conversations, we're finding listening, not just dismissing the other side as wrong, but we're finding true listening. And where that is happening, there is growth. And where there is growth, the kingdom of God is breaking through. Where there is growth, we can catch a glimpse of why it is a wonderful world. The kingdom of God is breaking through as value is recognized. For the last several months, the pace of life has been different. For years, we were accustomed to this breakneck pace of go from here to here to here to here to here and try to go there as fast as you can, get everything accomplished, run, 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 and at, at night lay down your head and fall right asleep just to do it the next day. But over the last few weeks and months, what have we found? What are the things that are missing? Where is the value that we're finding in life? We're finding that value in the relationships, the people that too often we would bypass in our trek from here to there. We're finding our desire to value one another, to give each other an embrace, a hug, a kiss, a handshake, to see other people. We are again coming to value those nearest to us, those whom we love and care about. And where we begin to see value, where we find value in the seemingly ordinary that we have for so long passed by, where we find value, the kingdom of God is breaking through where we find value, where we find value, we get a glimpse of why this is a wonderful world. Yes, and we do see the, the kingdom of God also as we pull in the net that is full, full of good fish and full of bad fish. Too often, we use absolutes like all or every to generalize things. And there are most certainly absolutes in our world, but there's a danger in using them in a manner so that we might dismiss everything. 
Yes, instead, what we find in our gospel lesson today is that call to do the hard work of discernment, to sift through everything that's in the net, and to set aside those things that are toxic and dangerous, and instead to cling to and to hold tightly to those things that are healthy and life-giving. That work of discernment is what we are called into. And it's through that work of discernment that the kingdom of God is breaking through. It's through that work of discernment that we can find how it is certainly a wonderful world. These ordinary things are the things that Jesus points to when asked the question, what do you see? It is these simple, ordinary things that encourage Jesus in his ministry, his life, his death, his resurrection, his teachings, encouraged him in his way. Jesus did not ignore the pains or challenges or struggles or the bad parts of our world. In fact, Jesus came because Jesus saw and knew those evil things that are sinful and came to remove that from our world so that it might no longer be counted against us. But yet, when Jesus breaks through as the fullest way we've witnessed of the kingdom of God coming to our earth, Jesus also knows why Jesus is coming. Jesus sees hope because Jesus looks around at these ordinary things and sees how the kingdom of God has already begun to break through. Jesus looks around and sees what a wonderful world this is and what an even more wonderful world it can be. The call of every follower of Jesus is to live by faith, to follow the guidance of God, to see with the eyes of Jesus as we strive to love God and to love our neighbor as ourself. The call that we have is to see ourselves with our true identity, the one that Christ has given us of being God's beloved children, created in God's image, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and in need of God's grace to claim that identity for ourselves and to help others claim that same identity. For it is for that reason that Christ came and gave of himself. We need God's wisdom in order to claim that identity. We need God's wisdom in order to see the world through God's eyes. And we most certainly need God's wisdom to help us live the vision of what it is that Jesus saw when he pointed out the ordinary ways in which the kingdom of God is breaking through. May we as God's people. Be like Solomon, leaning daily on the wisdom of God so that we may be prepared when we're asked, what do you see? When asked that question, may we recognize and work on the troubles and the challenges and the struggles of our world. But may we not overlook the simple and the ordinary ways in which the kingdom of God has and continues to break through. May we, may we be able to answer to that question, what do you see? By being able to ourselves say, what a wonderful world. Amen.
we now join with the saints of all times and all places, confessing our common faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As people of God, we gather to lift up the concerns that weigh on our hearts and our minds to a God who promises to hear us. And today, we pray for those who have experienced hospitalization, illness, or other challenge this past week, or have such challenges on the horizon. Today, we pray for Bob Schaff, Nancy Thoss, Sandra Reback, Joanne Alsip, Jennifer Gibbs, Richard Wolf, Char Wolf, Charles Snow, Myrna Bronson, Bob Sweeney, Tony Osek, Joan Rauch, Joe Grish, Violet Fywig, Eleanor Lawrence, Tim Sant, Karen Hetrick, Marco Matera, Tom Pfeiffer, Kristen Bain, Leon Alleyward, Pat Bambuel, Daniel Silney Jr., Marlene Schultz, Frank Bort, Bob Stack, Megan Ebby, Richard Scott, Bernie Lindstead, Jody Franklin, Joachim Spitzik, Otis Vinson, Elizabeth Johnson, Mark McCormick, Julie McNicholas, Doris Ruder, John Johnson, Kay Johnson, Wesley Travis, Janet Hargarden, Dan Credit, and Kim Beckman. We also keep in our prayers the Puckhammer family upon the passing of Lori's cousin, Paul Barassa. We also lift up in our prayers those who serve our country and our communities along with their families. We especially also thank our health care workers who continue their tireless efforts to help keep us all safe during this time of pandemic. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Merciful God, your reign is revealed to us in common things, a mustard shrub, a woman baking bread, a fishing net. Help your church witness to the surprising yet common ways you encounter us in daily life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. When your word is opened, it gives light and understanding. Increase our understanding and awe of your creation. Guide the work of scientists and researchers. Treasuring the earth, may we live as grateful and healing caretakers of our home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the birds of the air nest in branches of trees, gather the nations of the world into the welcoming shade of your merciful reign. Direct leaders of nations to build trust with each other and walk in the way of peace. Be with those who serve our country and our communities, guiding their efforts according to your will, returning those who are away home safely, and sustaining their families as they set out in service to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your Spirit helps us in our weaknesses and intercedes for the saints according to your will. Help us when we do not know how to pray. Give comfort to the dying and grieving, refuge to the weary, justice to those who are oppressed, and healing to the sick, especially Bob, Nancy, Sandra, Joanne, Jennifer, Richard, Char, Charles, Myrna, Bob, Tony, Joan, Joe, Violet, Eleanor, 
Tim, Karen, Marco, Tom, Kristen, Leon, Pat, Daniel, Marlene, Frank, Bob, Megan, Richard, Bernie, Jody, Joachim, Otis, Elizabeth, Mark, Julie, Doris, John, Kay, Wesley, Janet, Dan, Kim, and the family and friends of Paul. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You show steadfast love and direct us to ask of you what we need. Help this congregation ask boldly for what is most needed. Refresh us with new dreams of being your people in this place and time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you wherever you are. Now is the time in our service where we would traditionally collect the offering. We would ask you to continue in this faithful practice of offering what you are able to the service of God. You may do so by mailing in your offerings to the church, going to the church website, signing up for electronic giving, or if none of those avenues are available to you right now, then we ask that you continue that faithful practice of giving what you are able in whatever manner you can to wherever God's work is breaking through into our world. Let us now pray. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need, through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we share in this meal, we remember Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come, taste and see that the Lord God is good. This is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for me. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for me. Now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and forever keep you in God's grace. Let us pray. O oh God, our life, our strength, our food, we give you thanks for sustaining us with the body and blood of your Son. By your Holy Spirit, enliven us to be his body in the world, that more and more 
we will give you praise and serve your earth and its many peoples. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord's face shine upon us with mercy and grace. May the Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. Amen. Go in peace. The kingdom of God is breaking through. Thanks be to God. Hello, everybody. It's Pastor Chris. I wanted to get in touch with you and update you about some decisions that were made this last Tuesday as our council and deacons met. We are anticipating and looking forward to resuming physically gathering for worship on Sunday, August 2nd. We will have two services, one at 8.30 in the morning and one at 10.30 in the morning. Now, of course, we have to take some precautions to make sure that we can worship not only faithfully, but also responsibly. So know that we will be only allowing 50 people in the worship services. There will be an RSVP policy where we would ask you to call the church office or to email office at good-shepherd-church.com beginning the Monday prior to the service, um, stating how many uh, you would like to have in your party and at what service you're anticipating coming to, knowing that we will then be putting together a seating chart to help guide our efforts so that we can make sure and ensure everyone's uh, uh, handled in a safe and effective manner. Also know that we've been counseled that we do need to ask people to fill out a waiver if they come to worship. Uh, the waiver, as well as more information about the modifications of service, can be found on our website under worship, where it says worship during COVID-19. And we will also be mailing that information out to you in a letter you should receive sometime either late this week or early next week. Now understand that we are taking every precaution we can to limit the risk of exposure, but we cannot fully eliminate uh, the risk of exposure. So please be aware of that as you make your decision of whether or not to join us for physical worship. We will certainly be continuing the online worship for as long as necessary to ensure that people can stay connected, not only to Good Shepherd, but also to God. That brings up one other great need that we have. Uh, we do still need some volunteers to help us um, make sure that these protocols are followed and that we can have worship in a safe and effective manner during this time. If you are able and willing to volunteer in assisting during those services, we would ask that you would contact the church office right away as we will have a bit of a training and orientation on one of the evenings this upcoming week. Again, we look forward to having you back here. We look forward to worshiping alongside you. We look forward to celebrating all that God continues to do as we strive to be both faithful and responsible. God bless.